Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, hey, hi, good afternoon. So for the rest of the course, we will see a big thread of Western art history. So this is the first chapter we are going to see, uh, the prehistoric and ancient Mediterranean world. So let's see the beginning of the art history. So this, this is a Mediterranean Sea. So uh, where the story of Western art begins. Uh, it is surrounding Africa uh, near uh, East and Europe and beginning around 3000 BCE, numerous ancient civilizations arose, overlapped and interacted. So they learned from one another and conquered each other and they transformed into the world. So uh, um, this is a female uh, female figure uh, female figure sculpture, uh, twenty five thousand BCE. I mean, twenty five thousand years ago. So um, it was found near uh, Willendorf, a town in uh, present day uh, Austria, and it is small enough to fit uh, comfortably in the palm of a hand. Um, and it has detailed um, hairstyle that covers the entire head. And uh, the body's proportions are exaggerated. So the scholars long assumed that um, they were uh, fertility figures used in some symbolic way to encourage um, pregnancy and childbirth. And this is the daily life of the uh, Neolithic period in the rock paintings of the uh, Tessili Nether you know, region of uh, Algeria in Northern Africa. Um, can you tell me what you can see in this painting? I see a cow, well, two cows, and it looks like um, little figurines or, or figures are supposed to be women. Yes, very good. Is, is it drawn on a rock? Yes, it, like that it is a, yeah, it is a painting on the rock, yes. So we can assume at that time, um, the dead, no, we can assume, you know, um, maybe this area, um, in this area, um, there was, uh, you know, vast grass and home to animals, plants, and the people we see, you know, depicted here. Um, however, the today, uh, the Tessili Nezer is part of the Sahara, the world's largest desert. So um, the figure uh, depicted the um, a sense of a human and uh, animal bodies in actively posed stylized silhouettes. So the now the Willendorf figure, uh, female figure sculpture, and the Tassili Nezer's rock painting were before the civilization. Now um, let's see the Mediterranean worlds. The Western civilization was originated in here, uh, the region surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. So today we are going to see um, two big art thread of Mediterranean world. First one is Mesopotamia and the next one is Egypt. So let's see um, um, the Mediterranean Wars timeline first. So the female figure, the sculpture we just saw is uh, about uh, 23,000 BCE. And the rock painting in the Northern Africa is about 5,000 BCE. And these were found also in Mediterranean. 
And now the civilization begins by building empires and the Mesopotamia arose about um, 2000 years um, before the century. And uh, um, this area of Mesopotamia was highly desirable. So many empires were built and disappeared. So there were Sumer and Akkad and um, Babylon, Assyria, and uh, Babylon again. On the other hand, the Egypt uh, was continued as one empire for 1700 years, and it was parallel with the Mesopotamia's time period, like this. So let's see the Mesopotamia first. So this is the uh, Mes Mes uh, Mesopotamia's area. So the region known to the ancient world as Mesopotamia occupied a large area, uh, roughly equivalent to the uh, present day nation of Iraq. So the fertile soil watered by the Tigrid and the Euphrates rivers made uh, Mesopotamia highly desirable uh, but a lack of natural boundaries made it easy to invade and difficult to defend. So um, Sumerian uh, built a city-state in the Mesopotamia first. And the first empire was by um, Akkadian here. And the second empire was by Babylonian. And the third uh, empire of Mesopotamia was built by Assyrian here. And then uh, the last empire of the Mesopotamia was um, built by the Babylonian again. So uh, it is called uh, Neo-Babylon. So let's see uh, one by one. Uh, so the first city uh, of the Mesopotamia arose in the southern area, a region called Sumer, uh, about um, 3400 BCE. And the Sumerians were the first people to leave behind them, uh, not just the artifacts, but also words. So lacking stone, uh, the Sumerians built their cities of sun-dried brick using the uh, load-bearing construction technique. So this is it. Um, and they had um, refined and luxurious aspect of art. Can you guess what it is? This artifacts? Musical instrument? Yes, it a is. Harp? It's a harp. Yes, it's a harp. Yes, very good. It's an ancient harp. And now let's see the um, Akkad. So by 2300 BCE, the Sumerian city states had been conquered by uh, their neighbors to the north, uh, the Akkadians. Under ruler, um, Sargon I, the Akkadians established the region's first empire. Sargon I's grandson, Naram-Sin, so this is Naram-Sin, uh, commemorated his victory over the Lullaby people of Eastern Mesopotamia with the monumental steel of King Naram-Sin. So it pictures the Akkadian king dressed in um, godlike regalia and uh, striding uh, confidently over the defeated soldiers. 
And let's see the second empire, Babylon. Um, Amoritish, who uh, consolidated their rule over the region and established a capital at Babylon. So the most important legacy of the Babylonian empire is um, not artistic, but legal. So a set of edict of laws, um, edicts and laws uh, complied under the ruler Hammurabi. So known as Hammurabi's code, it is the only uh, complete legal code to survive from the ancient world. And it has uh, provided uh, historians with valuable insight uh, into the structure and concerns of Mesopotamian society. Now, um, the third uh, ancient empire in Mesopotamia, Assyria. So Assyrian um, had been gathering power and territories since before 1100 BCE. Um, their military strength increased um, significantly under uh, Ashurnasirpal II. Um, and it, it was the largest empire the region uh, had seen by that time. Ashurnasirpal's uh, palace had, gate, uh, had gates fronted by uh, monumental stone, uh, monumental stone slabs uh, curved into enormous human headed like this and winged beast, a bull and a lion. So after um, Assyria, Babylonians again came to power in Mesopotamia in the late uh, seventh century. So they formed a king, uh, they formed a kingdom now uh, called the Neo-Babylonian. And these new Babylonians surely must be ranked among the great architects of the ancient world. It's like this. So look at, look at the gate architecture. Isn't it so beautiful and sophisticated? It was built, you know, like this, you know, 575 BCE. It was like, you know, about, you know, 2,500 years ago. And they developed a true arch here before the uh, ancient Romans did. And um, they were masters of decorative design for architecture. So now uh, let's move on to the Egypt. So Egypt arose in the uh, similar time period of Mesopotamia. Uh, but the difference is that um, there are five, you know, city states and the empire built and disappeared in the Mesopotamia. On the other hand, uh, Egypt um, could continue one empire for a long time because it has a strong uh, natural boundaries to protect the empire from the enemies. So the kingdom of Egypt, Egypt is here. Uh, the Egypt was protected by uh, rocky, unnavigable stretches of Nile River right here, and uh, to the east and west by uh, vast desert. So Egypt during much of its long history was spared the waves of immigration and invasion that continual, uh, continually transformed Mesopotamia. So the Greek philosopher uh, Plato wrote that Egyptian art did not change for uh, 10,000 years. And thanks to the natural boundaries, they could keep one empire, but uh, um, there was no artistic diversity. So this is a sphinx. The sphinx uh, is, a, is the symbol of 
uh, Egyptian art. And it is a sense of stability, order, and endurance. So it faces the rising sun, uh, seeming to cast its immovable gaze down the centuries for um, all eternity. So a uh, sphinx um, has the body of a, a reclining lion and the head of man, thought to be the pharaoh coffer whose uh, the pyramid tomb is in the center. So the Egyptian uh, made the sphinx as a guard to protect their king and queen's tomb pyramid. And this is um, uh, Egyptian's two-dimensional art style. So um, the most of Egyptian two-dimensional art uh, repeats all the same pose like this, and it is called uh, Narmar's pose. And this is Narmar. And the Narmar's pose is typical of Egyptian art. And when depicting an important personage, the Egyptian artist uh, strove to show each part of the body to uh, best advantage so that it could be read clearly by the viewer. And Narmar's body is seen in profile like this and his torso uh, full front and his head in profile, but his eye front again. So this same pose recurs throughout most two-dimensional art in Egypt. Um, also, uh, Egyptian um, buries their most lavish art in loyal tombs. Ruler were sent into eternity outfitted with everything they would um, need to continue life in the sumptuous style they had known on earth, such as um, furniture, jewelry, chariots, um, clothing, and um, artifacts of all kinds, because they think their life was going to be continued after death um, in the tomb. So um, that's it for today. We're going to continue to see the prehistoric and the ancient Mediterranean worlds in the next class. And we have a um, sketchbook project related to this chapter. So um, the next project is morphing drawing. What's morphing, everyone? Combining? Yes, combining, yes. Very good. So we're gonna do it today. <laughs> so um, here is a you know, brief definition of morphing. Uh, morphing is a special effect uh, in motion pictures and animations that uh, changes or morphs uh, one image or shape into one into another uh, through a seamless transition. So it looks like a very um, contemporary technique. However, the morphing art had been tried by ancient artists, you know, like this, you know, Assyrian artist. So um, it has enormous, you know, human headed and winged beast, like this. And here's another example. So uh, they have wild beast head and humans um, body and the birds feet. And it looks more aggressive morphing so the left beast uh, has the uh, bird wing uh, and the feet and the feather on its body. And this is a Greek sculpture. So look at the left uh, figure center. So um, 
it is half human and half horse. And now, um, back to the 21st century. So there are lots of fun morphing images. So uh, I'm gonna share it. So like this, uh, it's morphing uh, the elephant and the octopus. It's morphing a frog with the you know, orange peel. And it's morphing uh, some, a girl and a wing on her head. It's morphing a turtle and island on the top of the turtle. Oh, it looks creative. It's you know, a guy's body and a seizure. Oh, this is one of my favorite. A beetle in a chair. It looks so natural. All right, so um, you will need a sketchbook, pencil, eraser, uh, and any color medium you have for this project. Um, also, um, if you can use any digital program, then um, you can pursue the digital drawing. Uh, so there are uh, five categories, uh, figure, animal, object, um, nature, machine. So um, please choose at least two categories and morph them. So um, as usual, please post your uh, work process uh, with a short description by tonight. And by tomorrow, please reply to your peers. So now uh, let me share more examples. So it is a morphing drawing, um, the alligator and a high heel. Oh, it's a cat and a snake. Oh, it's a scorpion and a part of machine. Looks very creative. Oh, I love this. An ant and a measuring spoons. And a girl with the wolf. So that's it. So um, you can do it color or um, black and white. I can wait to see your creative morphing drawing. So uh, when you're ready to post to your work process, uh, please go to uh, week nine and then uh, post to your work uh, process photo in the sketchbook 9.2 forum. Uh, any question about this project? You said it could be um, black and white and color? Yes. Okay. Either way will be fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question, everyone? No, that's it. Okay. No questions, Professor. Okay. Very good. All right. Here is another notification. No. So um, we have assignment two. And the deadline is coming. Um, so when you go to week 11, so this is week 11, then you will see assignments to submission, uh, the turning section. And the assignment two is a virtual museum tour paper. So the deadline is um, April 5th, uh, it's Monday. And you know, uh, since the COVID-19, you are not gonna go to um, you know, any museums or gallery, you don't need to. So uh, we're gonna just you know, have a virtual museum tour. Um, so here is the link, uh, the Google Art and Cultural, uh, Cultural Collection. So you will see um, diverse art museums in the world. So you can walk in. Um, know and to see um, all kinds of you know artworks uh, by clicking this link so just to choose um, 
one museum and then uh, pick five images and you're gonna write um, your um, appreciation uh, about that art pieces you choose. So here is the assignments to guide for the first page. Uh, this is going to be the cover page. Please write your name and the class name with the full number and um, uh, virtual visiting date and our museum name and the location. And for the second page, you can copy and paste for th this page. So just you know, pick five uh, artwork images from the museums and then paste it with the caption. The caption meaning is artist name and the artwork title and the uh, size of the artwork and the medium like in the material, for example, um, acrylic on canvas or oil on canvas like that. And the third page is the most important page. So uh, please write uh, your appreciation about the artworks and the museum tour. And for this third page, please do not copy and paste um, any information from the resources. I need you to uh, read your uh, appreciation and your feeling and your um, thinking from the tour. So that's it. Any question?